The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. It's been a month. Uh, lots to talk about. Let's get into it. I'm going to try to go really fast. When we left off last time, we had uh, Luke and Dennis had volunteered code to try to run on the uh, grid, and both of their codes had revealed bugs in my code. Uh, and we had fixed the one that, that Luke's code revealed, but we were stuck uh, at the time that we made the video. Uh, on Jacob's ladder, sometimes it would work fine. It would send out these, uh, you know, two red rods, and then have these blue electric arcs going between them. And other times, bang, we uh, had gotten it down. It was the place that always uh, scares me the most, which is the intertile event stuff. The 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 views that the cache that the tiles, the neighboring tiles, think that the other one has gets inconsistent. And one guy thinks this thing is still in use. The other guy thinks it's free, or vice versa. And bang, and that's what we were facing. And uh, after. Uh, a month ago, uh, um, I, I was able to run it down, and luckily it wasn't too bad. And <clears throat> so, where it came from was in in the in the splat language, which is what Jacob's ladder and uh, and the sand rain and all the ones that we've looked at uh, from uh, Luke and Dennis are, are written in. Uh, you have a sequence of rules, and and the, the the way the language is defined. If none of the rules match, if you get all the way, you know, you, you try the first one, you try the next one, and as soon as you find one that works, you do it, and then you're done. And then when you come around next time, you do it again. Uh, and if you get to the end of the rules and fall all the way off the bottom and none of them matched, the the splat language declares that that guy is to be erased, that that is just another way to say, replace me with empty. And uh, that's what was happening here. So uh, in the Jacob's Ladder, he's looking for uh, the at sign is the the Jacob's Ladder piece, uh, uh, looking for a, a sp uh, empty spot. And if there isn't an empty spot, but this, unfortunately, down here is the cursor. It's not another rule. <clears throat> There's nothing to match, so it fell off the bottom. Which, again, completely fine. Uh, uh, but the way it's designed is the it, the reason that that spot gets set to empty if you fall off the bottom is because the internal engine, uh, the splat engine, throws an error and says no rule matched. And the response to getting an error is to erase the spot and move on. But <clears throat> the engine wasn't working that way. Uh, uh, <clears throat> instead, they had code that said try to execute the event. So all of the splat code was happening down inside execute event. But if it returned true, uh, uh, then everything went on about it. But if it returned false, meaning that something had gone wrong, then it did a separate path, and that path was wrong. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, what it should have done is just go ahead and execute the event either way, because everything was handled inside. So since I went through this whole just kill center and commit that, it <clears throat> caused the active side, the one that was doing the event, to finish up and clean up without telling the passive side, the one on the other side, that this event was now done. As a result, the next time the, this guy tried to use that same event window number on the passive side, it blew up. So that was now fixed. And so Jacob's Ladder uh, and Dennis's other one, uh, a lighted pyramid that we didn't even get to look at, uh, had because it had the same kind of issue, they now both work fine. Here's a, a pyramid growing on uh, my desktop. Here's a couple of them growing on the bigger grid. Uh, a bunch of them in progress. It all works beautiful. I, I, unfortunately, I don't have video of these things because the, the blue and red lights twinkle on the thing like a big old uh, pyramid Christmas tree. So progress on that front. Uh, uh, in the chat room, uh, uh, AJ has you know, started exploring the possibility of, of making a low-level assembly language for doing event window programming. Luke is also helping out in that. It's very, very early, but also very exciting, very cool. Uh, uh, <coughs> and you know, starting to build out possible documentation, instruction formats, and so on. I've said this a number of times that, you know, <coughs> what one super wonderful Wonderful outcome if we could actually get to it of the T2 tile project and this larger research project in general is to come up with a new instruction set architecture where hardware could say I'm just going to implement to this instruction set architecture and software could say I'm going to write code to this instruction set architecture but instead of it being the traditional thing defined for CPU and RAM it's an instruction set architecture that's designed bent 
optimized, robustified for best effort computing. So, you know, again, the, the, this is just an early, early step, but it warms my heart. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, the history video, yes. Uh, so this past month uh, in February, I also had agreed to do this 15-minute history of computer science. Or originally, I thought they had said in the spirit of a drunk history, which I, I had never seen, and I, I watched uh, one or two of them, and it's like, no, I don't think I can do that. Uh, uh, <coughs> but later ones were talking more about uh, John Oliver last week tonight, and that's the way I tried to go. And that happened uh, a couple of weeks ago, Friday, uh, February 19th. And so I had this 13 minute, well, 15 minute slot. I did 14 minutes, whatever, in a video. It's now up <coughs> on the uh, Dave Ackley channel, and it, you know, doing okay uh, by Dave Ackley standards. It, it was very scary because <laughs> you know, sort of trying to make actual, like, sort of official jokes. Uh, I don't, I don't feel all that comfortable doing. I mean, I, I don't know if anybody really does, but uh, you know, it worked out. However, it is. Did, did any of y'all see it? You know. I'd say be gentle, but I'd rather you be honest. Uh, uh, okay, and so that was that. Um, and I, I put up uh, Eugene, uh, uh, the ancient uh, um, co-evolutionary simulation from 2003, originally uh, now transferred to the tile. And, uh, it, you know, it really looked pretty good. It was, and it was fun to, to see it going again. Uh, uh, and, you know, it, it's done fairly well, uh, again, by... <laughs> You know, uh, uh, T2 tile project standards, you know, doing number one is, you know, like 200 views or something like that. But 8% uh, click-through rate, ooh, that's great. You know, apparently you need to get 20%, and then that's when you actually hit the big time. Uh, we're in the small time. So, but that's cool. And uh, I also released uh, another one, uh, Don't Cross the Streams, just about a half an hour ago as I shoot this because I'm so late. Uh, um uh, just playing around with swap lines, and um, I feel like you know got got a pretty good chunk of dynamics out of it, out of a fairly fairly small idea that you know don't cross the streams. So what happens when you do cross the streams? You create a new guy that generates streams, uh, um, and you know I put goofy music with it and so on and so forth so you know now there's a new playlist the T2 demos playlist because it's got two whole videos on it and you know we'll see um, all right uh, yeah and there it is uh, there's our, our lonely being shooting swap lines off, off into the wilderness uh, uh, and, and it sort of had dr dr driven home to me that you know if you send swap lines out in all directions it actually pulls anything that's out there towards you it's it really is a tractor beam which I always sort of wondered how the heck could a tractor beam actually work in Star Trek well here's one way it could work <laughs> uh, uh, all right uh, um, on another front, uh, the I've been evaluating, trying to figure out how we're going to shoot you know, half decent video of the grid, especially as the grid gets you know six times bigger than this is now. Uh, um, I tried, I got one of these cameras, this Mocos, Mocosi, who knows, uh, uh, like that. Uh, you know, here it is, uh, um, and I've been experimenting with it, and uh, uh, so you know, there it is. And in fact, the sand rain uh, time lapse I, I recorded on this thing, and you know I'm still trying to learn learn how to use it. You know when I was looking at the uh, uh, don't cross the stream stuff, I was getting this crazy like you know th this looks sort of out of focus in general, and it is not focused very well. But the blue is like so much more out of focus than the red. How is that even possible with a single lens? Uh, uh, well, it turns out that. Um, setting doing the white balance which is something that i never really knew a whole lot about doing it manually and turning the blue way down it's actually get sharper pictures and so forth so it's starting to look like this uh camera you know it was like 150 bucks 160 bucks something like that uh wouldn't pro probably wouldn't be big enough to do the entire thing but might be able to do a chunk of it in some sort of tiled configuration so that's one path that i'm exploring the other path is you know get a incredibly expensive multi-thousand dollar camera which has you know a 50 megapixel sensor and can do 5,000 by 3,000 or whatever it is and just shoot the whole thing we'll see that's down the road 
lots to do before we get uh, need to pull the trigger on that. Uh, um, so yeah, and all right, so that's it. And the one extra thing that I wanted to talk about in a little bit more detail is the common data manager, because there's, uh, uh, as the physics, as I'm recompiling all these physics coming in from other folks as well as my own, it's taking uh, um, distribution over the CDM is more and more significant to my own workflow. You know? <laughs> and it had some problems. The existing system had some problems. Uh, um, C slash CDM slash common, that's the name of the directory, the folder where all the CDMs go. One, two, three, four, five, all those things, those code numbers, those two digit code numbers are the slots. The 516, 520, those are the timestamps. So a slot and a stamp tells us a specific moment in time for a particular piece of code. And O2 is the T212 infrastructure package. So it's almost two megabytes. O3 is MFM, which is, you know, much bigger. It's the biggest one by far. Uh, but it was the O2 that was particularly bugging me because included in the O2 package is the very low level assembly code Linux kernel module stuff that whenever that low level stuff gets reinstalled, I have to reboot the tile. It's the only re reliable way to get everything all in and get it set up properly. A and that was, you know, a cramping my style. And so finally I pulled the trigger and said, well, why don't I reorganize that whole directory uh, and try to get rid of that O2 slot, make it uh, unnecessary. And the way it works is, you know, each slot and the file name has has it in the number in the file name. And then in a piece of the CDM code, it has a map that says what we're supposed to do. O2 is supposed to go into slash home slash T2 and so forth. And that's a, that's a robustness feature that the code that says what to do with the CDMS files is not in the CDMS file. We, we don't trust it to tell us what we're supposed to do. It's in the code that we have. Now that came by a CDMS file too, but it was a separate go. Uh, um, and there it is. So for O2, we have to reboot after we do the install. Uh, um, and you know, here it is. The reason it had all these subdirectories, apps, docs, and so forth. So I went back and I did a major refactoring, which is mostly done, but not quite completely, uh, um, to uh, break it down into smaller CDMs instead. So now we have base, CDM, low, and MFM. And low is the one that has the Linux kernel module and the assembly code. So if we reinstall low, then we have to reboot the tile. But if we do the other ones, if we if we uh, distribute CDM, all we have to do is restart CDM. If we uh, distribute MFM, all we have to do is restart the engine and so forth. Uh, um, now that causes five new, four new packages, 05 through 08 for each of those individual pieces. And in fact, we can distribute them individually. Uh, um, and, it, and it works pretty well. There's slash low. That's the one that's going to have to have reboot if it happens, but we haven't done that yet. Uh, uh, now, as we've been doing this, so A0 through EF are the physics packages, the things that say I have an element of swap line, an element of drag, an element of res. A physics is a complete collection of types of atoms all put together that are meant to play together nicely. So A0 is a collection of atoms, A1 is a collection of, of, of element types, and so forth. And now that we've got so many of them, the way that CDM was doing distribution was really becoming painful because what it would do is it would just pick, it would look at all of the CDM CDMs that it's got internally, pick one at random and announce it to the neighbor and say, hey, I've got this. It's, here's the date. Here's the length. Do you want it? And when there was only a handful of CDMS files, you know, it worked fine. But the more and get, it gets slower and slower and slower. And there's more and more and more stuff saying, yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. So I finally pulled the trigger on that and went back and redid that as well. Uh, uh, and there it is in the uh, configuration file. Again, everything from A0 to EF is a physics slot. <clears throat> and so uh, there's a new package now within the CDM code called Urgency, whose whole job it is, is to figure out what we've got, what we think they've got, and then say which thing would be smart for us to announce. And so it's got all these things like, you know, I just announced to, so we can record the fact that we told someone. In the original previous version of CDM, we never cared what we said to anybody. We just picked at random, which is really robust because there's no way that we will fail 
we can't get messed up. We can't think we announced something if we didn't, if we just pick things completely at random. So this, by me making it more efficient, is also making it more fragile, but we still have a backstop that all the way down at the bottom, if none of this other stuff comes through, it'll still pick at random, but now that'll be even slower. I just announced to, they just requested, when they ask for something, then we know something that, that at that moment they would like to have as of this. Now, I now think they know what I know, what I think they know. <laughs> You know, it's one of these uh, <coughs> uh, logical paradoxes of uh, I think he thinks that I think that he thinks and so forth. Uh, uh, it all boils down to get ur urgency, which is the absolute bottom line key. And urgency is based on two factors, a time pressure and a size pressure. The time pressure is how long has it been since I mentioned this particular uh, slot stamp combination to this particular neighbor. And the longer it is, the more the time pressure goes up. It's not how old the package is, it's how long has it been since I mentioned it to them. And the size pressure is how much more do I think I have of this file? Because, you know, this is all pipeline. I may not have the complete file that we're talking about. I may only have, you know, 30% of it uh, that I've actually been able to check some and, and believe that the crypto is good, that I can go ahead and redistribute this before I even have the whole thing. So our LEN is how much of the file, the thing that we've got. Their LEN is how much we think they've got. And the more that we've got compared to them, the more urgent it is. And so the, the urgency overall is the product of the size pressure times the time pressure and it's still you know so this is now distributed this is now out there so you know here here it was when I had to put out so when I had the whole t212 reorganization I had to use slot 2 and there it is again going out one more time 163k and it's only got 8% gone uh, uh, because that was the only slot that existed the 5 through 8 didn't exist until this update went out and updated uh, MFM and so forth but now it actually works really Really good. Uh, uh, so here it is, uh, a chunk of action shot on the grid when we're distributing six different uh, physics files all at once, and they are moving. Uh, uh, so that took a bunch of time, but it was pretty satisfying. <laughs> uh, uh, and here's another shot of it. So that's it on the CDM. And so going forward, now there's a lot of stuff going on still that's getting in the way of hacking on the engine and doing all this kind of stuff. It's just that kind of year. Uh, well, that kind of season at least. And so number one, uh, the Artificial Life Conference, the 2021 Artificial Life Conference deadline is coming up in a week or two. And so I'm not even sure if I'm going to submit. Uh, we shall see. I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, um, we'll see. I don't know. But once again, is this the third time I'm going behind the wall of science and I'm doing this stuff that I'm not telling y'all about uh, because it's supposed to be, you know, come out in the conference for the first time if it comes out anywhere. We will see. So that's happening for the next couple of weeks. And also, I, it's, I promised the next Hyperspace Academy lecture in January over on the Dave Ackley channel. It's now very late in January. Uh, um, so, but there's a lot of progress on that too. That's the We Are Coders. This is my, my rant about uh, a way to look at uh, humans and, and living systems uh, in general and interpersonal relationships and so forth. You know, uh, I mean, it's easy to get cosmic about this sort of thing, but I think the We Are Coders approach actually has it has some pretty good stuff. Uh, I mean, it, it's all stuff that's covered in other ways, in other degrees, but this feels to me, well, because I'm a coder, uh, uh, fairly clean and fairly simple. So I'm going to be working on that. So I have no idea uh, what I'm going to be able to talk about on March 16th, uh, but I will be here. I hope you will be here. I hope things are going well for you. We'll talk again.